Hey guys, it's Summing Rush. Today I'm going to be doing a replay that I played on Airfield. I was mentoring at the time, so you can see we're in the, I'm in the T20. The guy I'm mentoring, Pinkie Pie Ponage, is in the T43. And, uh, I mean, that's that's how this game started. So, what you can see happened is... Uh, well, this is Airfield, right? So you've really only got two options, E5 and the middle. And because they have two clickers, there's the middle isn't an option unless, you know, you want to get clicked, which, you know, some people seem to be okay with that but what i'm going to do is we're going to go to e5 and that's that's how this game starts off now an interesting thing about e5 i'm going to fast forward it but i have timed generally how long you can get there now i, I did this in tier 10 games but what happens is if you go anytime after 14 15 give or take like five seconds it's very very common for you to get shot by a high number of tanks so if your spawn is bad like mine was you're going to notice i was just a couple seconds too late and that's going to get me hit by a comet and two hellcats right here and so you know i just ran over that uh, whatever the hell i ran over lost 100 hit points and then i went and lost like another 700 right here to two people and that's just because i had a bad spawn uh, not not running over the dicker max that was because i was texting but uh the, the just losing the hp to them it's because i was too late and so when you see that you're making this cross or whatever the hell it is too early like too late just don't do it it's not worth losing all your hp to some td who's just gotten into position and he's going to try to snapshot you now right here what you can see is i was pretty pissed you're not used to losing a thousand hp or whatever the hell it is, 784 or something right off the bat. And then I get Ardied. So I'm going to make a really, really bad poke here. You can see I'm on 186 HP. I already was a one-shot, but I'm <laughs> going to poke anyways. On a common position, I lose 120 HP. And so now we're in the situation where we're one and a half minutes into the game. I'm on 66 HP and we're sort of screwed, right? So this, this is sort of what you have to do. If you lose all your HP right off the bat, you're going to have to learn to be patient because it's better to just keep your gun alive than to, than to die, really. So that's what I'm going to try to do. I'm not going to get myself killed. I'm going to hope I don't get artied and I'm just going to have to force myself to calm down because obviously I'm really, really ticked off right now. So that's, that's the context of this game. Now, what you're going to notice is the way airfield plays out is the first team to push dies. I was actually joking about it on stream, but I was thinking of like writing out a law for airfield. It's the first team to push dies on this map or loses. And so that's that's typically what's going to happen. So that's exactly what's going to happen in this game. What you can see is I'm saying, okay, let's just hang out here. We're not going to push into them. Obviously, I can't. But if we push into them, there's going to be, we know they have three TDs. The SU is probably where... Uh, how do I describe it? The SU is probably up here. You know, that's a typical TD camping spot. And so if we were going to push into them, we would throw all our HP away and then they would just push into us. And as you can see, we're already three tanks down plus pretty much myself because I'm a one shot. And then the guy I'm entering is on 465. So we're good and screwed. We're going to have to wait for them to push. And that's exactly what's going to happen. Meanwhile, on the J line, because this is an important side of the map, the Emil was spamming it earlier. Um, <laughs> it's not normal for the J line to get pushed. So this position, because I'm a one shot, I do have to watch the J line. But really, I, I wasn't paying a lot of attention to it because we have an Emil guarding it. And what happens when people push the J line is they just sort of end up in the middle of an open field. And you're going to see that. So I was checking it because I did have to worry about it. And then the Hellcat crosses behind me. And, uh, you know... <laughs> He's going to figure out how easy it is to push on this map. He's going to die almost immediately. And then his Tiger P and KV4 are going to follow with him. Now, these guys don't die, but it's going to be extremely valuable for us because they're going to push. They're going to lose a lot of their HP, and that's going to sort of let us even the odds. Now, you're going to notice I'm not really keen on pushing into the mid because I'm worried that the Thunderbolt is just sitting in a bush and camping me. Meanwhile, uh, the guy I'm mentoring has gone to the middle. I don't know why. <laughs> That's a bad play. They have two arty, like I said, and they've got two tanks who are pushing through the J line. Playing the mid does not work right now. And so normally if, if he was like a puppy, I wouldn't care, but you're going to notice like he's paying me. So I sort of have to keep him alive. <laughs> and and that's, that's eventually what's going to happen when I realize he's gone to G5 because I just... I never expected it. It made no sense to me. So that's what's going to happen. I'm like, oh shit, he's over there. There's a T28 right there. The Thunderbolt is above him. I'm going to put a shot into the Thunderbolt. And then... The T28 is going to find out what happens when you push the J line, right? Because he's basically a sitting duck. There's absolutely nothing he can do. And that's why you don't play the J is because there's nothing like what, once you've won it, you just have to cross an open field. Good luck. And so that's, 
<laughs> it's a very good example of what happens when you try to do what the T28 prototype did. Meanwhile, over here, the score, we're still sort of fighting for our lives. We're down three tanks. We lost the 43. The Emil should be able to kill the VK in the south. Wasn't too worried about that. I did check it, of course. What the main concern here is because I'm a one shot, I'm worried that the Thunderbolt is going to push up. So sometimes what puppies will do, even though it's a bad play, is they will push over the middle to try to kill you and they'll shoot you through like this bush or something. So you can see. I, I'm sort of having to deal with two sides at once, obviously being a one shot, I don't want to get killed. So what you're going to see me doing is I'm going to use my uh, teammates to recover here because they're pushing into us. And like my law states, they're going to lose because they're pushing into us. And this is airfield and that's going to end up being great for us. But obviously I also don't want to get killed. So that's, <laughs> we end up winning this side. Now they've got a KV-4, a 416, a Hellcat, a Thunderbolt, and an unspotted SU-12244, as well as the KV-3 who I didn't list off. But you can see he's pushing, so he's going to shortly die. Now right here, I make a very interesting play, uh, and it gives me in information, but uh, not reliable information. So what you're going to see is the KV-3 is stunned, so the 44100 and myself are thinking of pushing onto him because it looks like the KV-4 is out of the fight, along with the Hellcat who hasn't been spotted for a while, at least that was my recollection in the video And right in, while I was playing this game. And right here, I make this play. And so what I notice is that I don't get lit. While I'm poking this, if there was like a TD with I don't know, like Hellcats typically run Binox. TDs tend to have some sort of decent view range, right? Because they sit in a bush and generally they, they should load up on view range because that's how they play. So what I would expect is if there was a TD in this bush or whatever, I would expect to either die, get lit, or get lit and then die, or just like some sort of combination of whatever. I expect something to be coming my way, but you're going to notice my sixth sense doesn't go off, and that's really interesting to me. Meanwhile, RT44100 is trying to push, so he's losing all his HP. I pushed onto the KV4, and I wasn't shot this entire time, or lit. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to poke, and that's because i assuming that there's no TD up here. And even though I am lit, I'm still not getting shot, and so that implies that there's no TD up there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to poke. I don't get shot at, I, like I still haven't been shot at despite being in the open for the TDs. And so that's going to be really interesting because it looks like the T44100 is going to sort of play off of that. And it's going to get him killed. I think he gets clicked and then he gets killed by the SU12244. And um, <laughs> it's so the, the way I see this, it's, it's either the SU122 was avoiding an easy shot on me and not killing me and just waiting for whatever reason, or he was sitting up here and then he moved to this location and the timing, like my poke, I just got lucky with the timing. I think it's that. I think he was at uh, B B9 because that's a very, like normally TDs will sit up here and then they'll kill whoever, whichever idiots try to push around this corner, like uh, they'll sit here and then they'll kill the idiots who try to push around like so. And uh, my guess is he just left that position and then he appeared there and the 44100 got unlucky with the timing. Meanwhile, I got lucky. And so that's my hypothesis as to what happened. Now you'll notice we haven't been aggressive. And so that sort of let us bring the score back. The scores are 910. Meanwhile, our email has decided to leave base. So he's pushing in. And because he has an autoloader, he's going to make short work of the object 4 and 6 and the Thunderbolt. Now, I want to point out that I wasn't poking on these guys because I sort of had a hunch that someone was going to be camping in this bush. I didn't expect the Thunderbolt to be in this one, but I was playing it safe. Uh, and I just didn't want to get pre-fired by any of them. So I played it safe. Meanwhile, I know that uh, the Emil will have be distracting the Thunderbolt. So he's moving forwards. So I take a very quick snapshot at him and hit him for whatever. He's now a one shot and there's a Hellcat in our base going to kill Artie. I personally don't care about the Hellcat in our base. Like he can kill Artie. I don't give a fuck. And, um, you know, that's, that's, <laughs> that's where we are right now. The Thunderbolt is probably going to get away. I don't want to get clicked. And I'm going to be watching my map right here. Okay, so what's going to happen is I'm trying to help out with the Thunderbolt. But when you're in end game positions like this and you've been in an area for a long point in time, you have to watch your map because it's very common for people to try to push you. Now, right here, obviously, this is a bad situation to be in, but it would be a lot worse if I hadn't noticed it. So the SU-12244 has come behind me. I'm on 66 HP. He's full uh, and really, he can splash me with HE to kill me. So what you're going to see is, uh, while I was doing this, the guy I was mentoring was laughing his ass off because he's just amazed that I lived through this and killed the guy. But you're going to see, I'm going to play this, um, and I'm going to be using the Achilles for cover. So the way I'm going to be doing this is I'm worried that the, the uh, SU will have shots on like the top of my engine deck or something. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push the Achilles forwards. That's going to allow me to flatten my tank out and use the Achilles for cover more effectively so that's why i'm doing it i'm not doing it to just be like 
an idiot. <laughs> There's a reason behind it. Right here, you can see the 122.44 pushes into me. I'm going to put a shot into him, and then I'm going to reverse, and I'm going to continue to use the Achilles for cover. So I'm taking advantage of the fact that the SG-122.44 doesn't have a turret, and so that's sort of how I'm doing it. You can see the camping prevention units try to prevent me from camping. I set the SG-122 on fire, and he burns to a crisp, and that's pretty much the game. <laughs> the whole time the guy I was mentoring was like laughing in my ears, just amazing that I lived, but there you have it. And so it, it's, I mean, the, the game's pretty much over, but I thought it would be relatively useful. You can see 2,561 damage or whatever uh, as a one shot. And what we're going to do is we're just going to chase down Artie. Now, one thing I do want to mention is it's very easy to throw games when you're chasing down Artie. You can see the M44 is going to kill himself versus the Amil or whatever. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to come up from some sort of unsuspecting angle to go after the M12. And uh, that's what I'm going to do. And we're going to be able to get I, s I don't get a shot into him, but there you have it. We end up winning with, I don't know how much damage. We'll go look at the end plates. Alrighty, so you, what you can see is that was my first mark of excellence on the tank. I think I have like 45 games in it or something. So that's, it might even be 30 or whatever. I, I really haven't been paying attention to my stats in the T20, but that was a, a mastery first class. Uh, what the hell? Mastery first class, whatever the hell these missions are. I still don't know the names of them. 2561 damage, 431 spotting, one kill. And we came top on the team for damage and XP, it looks like. So, I mean, <laughs> I obviously it was quite lucky against the SU-12244, but I just want to highlight how airfield is played. As you can see, the majority of this game was just sort of played from E5. Now, the mistakes I made, of course, were based on timing. I didn't get there within like 45 seconds or whatever the time limit is. And so that sort of got me wrecked by all those TDs. But this game would not have been possible if I had done if I had died, obviously. And so that's sort of important. You need to understand that even though you've lost all your HP, the game isn't over. There's still a good 10 minutes or however long the game is going to last. You can generally, I don't know, like everyone asks me how to improve their win rate or how to increase their win aid or, or their consistency or whatever. And I always have to respond with don't die. And it's so obvious, of course, it feels like I'm just giving some sort of snobby answer, but sometimes you really just have to do nothing. You know, when I when I was sitting behind this rock trying not to get clicked, that was doing nothing, but it was keeping me alive. And so that's really, really valuable. And I was able to take advantage of opportunities as they presented themselves. And that's sort of A, how this map works, and B, how you should play when you've lost all your HP at the at the beginning of the game. So there you have it. That's my advice. I hope it's practical to some sense, and I hope this video is helpful. If you want to see more, be sure to hit the like and the subscribe button. And uh, yeah, I hope to see you around. Later, guys. Bye-bye.